Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. It is good to have you joining us in worship today. My name is Michelle Lewis and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life. And we are excited and grateful that God brings us together even though we are far apart. God brings us together here in worship. Good morning, my name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. And I'm David Evans, interpreter. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, and so you'll notice that our worship script has changed um, if you have been joining us in worship here online. And so uh, we'll help you along the way and make sure that you know when there's times to join in, that you um, know that from us, and uh, we will have a couple of different things in our worship service uh, these next several weeks because Advent is a special season, a time when we watch and wait for the Lord. And so with that, let us enter into worship. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Spirit of the Lord is in us, anointing us, us. the Spirit of the Lord uh, is in us to bring the good news. What is good news? Healing the brokenhearted. Freeing the captives. Comforting those who mourn. Providing a cloak of praise and lifting the heavy spirit. Loosening the weight of grief and loss. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord has come. Because it's the season of Advent, we take a little extra time in our worship to light a candle, to notice how God comes to us. So this year we have two special things. We'll light a candle, but we also have a song that we all will learn together as we go through the Advent season. We light a candle for hope And a world that's longing for hope We light a candle for hope And a world that's longing for hope Holy One Shine with the fire 
How do we embrace mystery, uncertainty? We remember that Daniel was a captive in a foreign country, surrounded by foreign gods. We remember his faith shown through daily prayer. In times of uncertainty, we too can choose a faithful way. How do we embrace mystery, uncertainty? As we light our first candle, we remember to fall to our knees or sit quietly in a chair on a rock or a tree stump. We remember to sing a song or read a prayer to take in scripture or discuss our beliefs. Today, the first Sunday of Advent. God meets us in our uncertainty. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Prayer for the day. Lord, the young people around us offer prophecies that challenge and lead to our judgment. So we nod politely with clenched teeth and doubtful hearts. Lord, you invite us to dream new dreams. But honestly, we prefer the familiarity of the past. Winds of visions swirl around us. So we close the windows and bolt the doors. Even on us, even here and now. Your spirit will pour forth. Come Holy Spirit. Come. Today's Bible reading is from the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 6 through 27. Before I read the Bible passages for today, I'd like to give you a little bit of background and history about what's going on in this story. 
King Darius is currently at rule over Babylon. He has selected a group of men to be his advisors. One of those advisors is Daniel. And Daniel believes in the Lord and follows God. And yet he still respects the king. These other advisors were jealous of Daniel. They didn't like him. In fact, they wanted to get rid of him. And so they were scheming and plotting. And they came up with an idea to trick the king into getting rid of Daniel. And that's the story we're going to read today. They all, 120 chief administrators, went to the king and said, Your Majesty, we hope that you live forever. All of your officials, leaders, advisors, and governors agree that you should make a law forbidding anyone to pray to any god or human except you for the next 30 days. Everyone who disobeys this law must be thrown into the pit of lions. Order this to be written and signed so it cannot be changed. Just as no written law of the Medes or Parisians can be changed. So King Darius had the law made and wrote it down. Daniel heard about the law, but when he went home, he went upstairs and prayed in front of the window that faced Jerusalem. He did this in the same way he had always done. He knelt down in prayer three times a day, giving thanks to God. The men who had spoken to the king watched Daniel and saw him praying to his God for help. They went back to the king and said, Didn't you make a law that forbids anyone to pray to any God or human? except you for the next 30 days? And doesn't the law say that anyone and everyone who disobeys it will be thrown into the pit of lions? And the king said, yes, that is the law I made. The king agreed. And just like all written laws of the Medes and Parisians, it cannot be changed. The men told the king, the Jew named Daniel, who was brought here as a captive, refuses to obey you or the law that you ordered to be written, and he still prays to his God three times a day. The king was really upset to hear about this, and for the rest of the day he tried to think how he could save Daniel. At sunset, the men returned and said, Your Majesty, remember that no law of the Medes or the Persians can be changed, even by the king. So Darius ordered Daniel to be brought out and thrown into the pit of lions. But he said to Daniel, You have been faithful to your God, and I pray that God will rescue you. 
a stone was rolled over the pit and it was sealed. And Darius and his officials stamped the seal to show that no one could let Daniel out. All night long, the king could not sleep. He did not eat anything, and he would not let anyone come in to entertain him. At daybreak, the king got up and ran to the pit. He was anxious and shouted, Daniel, you were faithful and served your God. Was your God able to save you from the lions? Daniel answered, your majesty, I hope you live forever. My God knew that I was innocent and sent an angel to keep the lions from eating me. Your majesty, I have never done anything to hurt you. The king was relieved to hear Daniel's voice and gave orders for Daniel to be taken out of the pit. Daniel's faith in his God had kept him from being harmed. And the king ordered the men who had brought charges against Daniel to be thrown into the pit together with their wives and children. But before they even reached the bottom, the lions ripped them to pieces. King Darius then sent this message to all people of every nation and race in the world, saying, greetings to you all. I command everyone in my kingdom to worship and honor the God of Daniel. This is the living God the one who lives forever. God's power and kingdom will never end. God rescues people and sets them free by working great miracles. Daniel's God has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. My family in Christ, in the mystery and uncertainty of life, we embrace faith. And we practice our faith by doing it with prayer, with trust, waiting and watching for God. So may we practice our faith every day. Amen. All right, my point today, I try every week to um, be really clear about what's the point of my message. And my point today are a lot of questions, uh, really, which is how do we go about adjusting our expectations? And for this year, how do we enter into Advent with openness to what God is bringing to us?
how do we prepare for Christmas when we feel so much grief and loss? So uh, that's really my point. There's lots of questions that we have, right? And for today, just for today, we can look to Daniel. Because as we saw in the story for today, Daniel continues in his faith. Daniel draws close to God, even in times of trouble and a lot of disappointment. All right, so we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a season during our church year when we prepare our hearts and our homes to celebrate that love comes to us, that God comes to us. We try during Advent, we try to prepare for God coming to us. So how do we prepare for Christmas? Well, in worship and in our church community, we have these special Advent worship services. We get out our Advent wreaths and as we did earlier in worship, we light a special candle each week. And we say and we identify that we wait and we watch for God. During Advent, our Bible lessons call on us to stay awake, to pay attention to God and God's ways. So all of that leads to having traditions. Normally during Advent, we have special traditions that we do. And this year, our community traditions are changing. Because of COVID, so much of our lives is changing, right? And there are many, many among us who are sad that our traditions have to change this year. And we experience the grief with that change. We have to let go of some of our traditions because there's this thing that's beyond our control that changes our situation. Now, often this kind of change happens for people and families um, when loved ones die. The, you know, the first Thanksgiving or the first Christmas after a death feels really different and family traditions change because the grief and loss of death changes us. But it really is very unusual for that kind of grief and loss to impact a whole community. But this year, we are living through very unusual times. So grief and loss is affecting us here at Bread of Life. It also is affecting everyone else in the world. It's not just everyone else in the Twin Cities or everyone else in the United States. It's everyone in the world. 
So in some ways, we are all united in this, um, this everything feeling out of our control. Everyone in the world is united in this. And it means that everyone in the world is experiencing grief and loss. And in circumstances when we have such grief and loss, when what we thought was going to happen, when, when it all changes, we feel very unsure. We feel very uncertain. And this question, what do we do, comes up again and again. How do we adjust our expectations? How do we as people of faith enter into Advent with a sense of openness, looking to see what God is bringing to us? How do we prepare for Christmas in the midst of so much grief and loss. For today, we can look to Daniel. In the story today, the Bible story today, the king's advisors are, they're really, they're sucking up to the king. They are trying to secure their own futures because, and they see Daniel and they know Daniel is different than they are and, and they don't like that. They're jealous of Daniel. And so they're trying to figure out how to get him out of the way. What does Daniel do? He continues to show his faith. He continues to pray three times a day. He does not pull away from God. Instead, he draws near to God. The new law that the advisors have come up with to sort of trick the king. That law prohibits people from praying to anyone but the king. But Daniel continues to pray to God three times a day. Even as that group of advisors 120 of them, they wander through his house. They all tramp through his praying room. And Daniel continues to draw near to God. Daniel keeps on praying even as he is thrown in with the hungry lions. In the midst of this upheaval for Daniel and his family, he keeps praying. In the midst of certain death in the pit of lions, Daniel prays. In the early hours of the morning, when the king comes to the lion's pit and calls out Daniel's name, Daniel prays. So I think we can look to Daniel and maybe try to imitate him this year, this season, as we enter Advent, as we prepare for Christmas, 
it maybe feels like we're in a pit. That we're stuck in a dark place with no idea what will happen tomorrow. We are longing for those traditions that we love. Longing for a sense of normal life. We are tired of all of this grief and loss. But COVID isn't over. The pandemic is not over. So the question comes up again, right? How do we adjust our expectations? How do we enter into Advent being open to what God is bringing to us here and now? How do we prepare for Christmas? when we feel so much grief and loss. For today, just for today, we can look to Daniel. Keep praying. And if you don't have a habit of praying every day, start praying. Draw near to God. Ask God to comfort you. Draw near to God and expect that God will draw near to you. Uh, this afternoon, you can come over to Bread of Life and get a bag, an Advent bag that has some treats in it for you to help you pray this Advent. It includes an Advent calendar to remind you to pray every day during December. There's a little door on the calendar for every day of the month. It includes the little, our bag includes some candles. So you can set up some candles on your table like we have in our worship today. And those candles can remind you to draw near to God. The bag also has a little devotion book in it. And when uh, Dorothy, Dorothy and Lori are working together to provide ASL interpretation videos for that devotion book to help you spend time thinking about pondering the promise that Jesus is with us, that God comes to us. So for today, how do we adjust our expectations? How do we enter into Advent with openness to what God brings to us? How do we prepare for Christmas when we feel so much grief and loss? Just for today, 
let us look at Daniel and keep praying. Draw near to God. Bring all of your questions, all of your confusion. Bring your grief and your losses. Bring your concerns and your joys. All of those things bring to God. Because we are people of faith. And as people of faith, let us expect God to help us through each day. Let us practice our faith by praying every day. God will come to us. God will prepare us for whatever is ahead. Amen. Uh, one more thing I have to add. I didn't put it in our script, but I remembered that at Bread of Life every year when, when I've been at Bread of Life, that we invite the children to come forward to our steps in our sanctuary. So we're not at Bread of Life. So if there are children watching, I invite you to come up closer to the screen. I'll come up a little closer to my camera too. And we're gonna open up day one of our advent calendar so you can see what's in there. I know it's a little bit early because it doesn't start till December 1st, but we're still going to open it during worship together. All right. So with the kids up close to the camera, up to the close to your screens, we're going to open up. Here's day one. Find it there and we'll open up the door. Oh, it's little tiny words. So I'll read it. It says... Come, Lord Jesus, come into the manger, come into our hearts, come into the world. With your justice, change our hearts. With your love, change our world. So this week, kids, I invite you to look and see where do you notice God coming into your world. God loves you. Every moment of your life, God loves you. And that means when you notice some love, when you notice kindness, when you notice a sense of calm and peace. That means God is right there with you. Amen. Prayers for the people.
Advent God, you come to us in hope, love, joy, and peace. Thank you for hope that includes others in faith. Thank you for love that sustains our lives, even in uncertain times. Thank you for joy that illuminates and inspires our lives. Thank you for peace that allows us to live in friendship with others. You come to us, God, and we still need to remember. that things are not how they always have been. And this is not how it always will be. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember. That your kingdom has come. It is growing among us now. and that the time will come when it fills the world with justice and love. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember. Many people experience poverty, pain, trauma, and grief. These experiences make your kingdom feel like a faraway dream. Many people are dismayed by your followers. They long to see your love and justice expressed through your followers. And we followers often make mistakes and fail. Many people in your church long to be faithful and to make a positive difference. A positive difference in addition to caring for their children, their extended families, their students, their jobs, and many more responsibilities. You come to us, God, and still we hope. That we experience God with us in every moment of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. and also with you. At this time, we invite you to share the peace with one another. That might need to be through a text message or through a computer email. Maybe after worship, you use your VP and call someone. Just as our hopes and expectations are upset, the ways that we go about sharing peace with one another has changed quite a lot. And so we ask you to make a little extra effort today and share the peace with one another. <laughs> uh, just similarly as our exchanging the peace is all mixed up because of COVID, so is collecting the offering. But uh, God is good and gracious to us, brings us to this community 
and helps us through each of our days. And so we look to, um, we learn from the Bible, we look to different people in the Bible and we learn from them. And so our invitation to bring our offerings this Advent season, we look at Mary, Jesus' mom, for a little bit of inspiration. And we ask that we could learn from Mary that our hearts would praise the Lord, that our spirits would rejoice in God, our Savior, because God remembers us, humble servants. God is mighty, and we celebrate all of the great things God has done for us. <clears throat> And here at Bread of Life, we celebrate that God calls us to do a particular thing. Just like Mary, the mother of Jesus, was invited into a particular job, a particular calling. God asks us here at Bread of Life to bring the witness to the deaf community to bring good news that God loves us. God asks us to share this good news with the deaf community and their families. And so every week we invite you into this calling. We ask you to consider how you can help us in this mission what are your ideas for how we can connect with the deaf community? And we ask for your financial support. It is not free to do this work and we need your help. So we ask that you will send a check or you could use PayPal to make one time or ongoing donations for the work we're doing here at Bread of Life. Prayer for offering. Lord, from one generation to another, you have shown mercy on those who honor you. You have stretched out your mighty arm. You scatter the conceited. You confuse their schemes. Bring down tyrants. You lift up the lowly. You fill the hungry with good things. but send away the rich, empty. You have kept your promises to us and have come to our help. You will show your people your love forever. Our hearts praise you, O oh Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new. In the day when the Redeemer comes to judge the world in righteousness, you will make all things new. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We invite you to join in signing the Holy, Holy, Holy. On Jesus' last night, when he gathered to eat with his friends and followers, he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We now pray as Jesus... Um, as followers of Jesus, signing the Lord's Prayer together. Come to the table, join Jesus in the feast. Come to the table, join Jesus as he comes to us. Come to the table, be fed with Jesus' words and Jesus' food. You are all Welcome and invited to this table, for this is God's table. We are honored to share it with anyone who desires to feast. 
When you serve one another in your homes with the bread, we invite you to use the language of body of Christ given for you. And with the wine or the juice, blood of Christ shed for you. And now I will serve communion for those of you in your homes by yourselves. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. God sends us. God of grace and glory, you call us with your voice made visible in flame. You call us to be your people, faithful and courageous. Jesus embraced his mission in the waters of baptism. He went out to feed and heal and comfort others. Lead us now from this gathering, fed and encouraged, to join in your transforming work to feed and heal and comfort others. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before we are sent from worship, I just want to comment very quickly about the parts of our worship. You might notice that uh, some weeks you're like, hmm, that part of worship sounds like our Bible lesson. It's because I uh, went and found prayers or I wrote prayers or different parts of our worship service that are, that are inspired or taken from those different Bible lessons that we'll have between now and um, the middle of January. So there's some language about baptism. There's some Christmas story um, things in our in our liturgy for the next six weeks and so just want to point that out so you're watching for it and if you notice hmm, that part seems a lot like the bible lesson for one of the weeks that's why so now receive the blessing as god sends us out grace mercy and peace be to you from our Creator, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our Counselor and Friend. May these gifts be with you now and forever. God, in your word, you promise that your servants will go in peace. You send us now. We have experienced your salvation. You have prepared us with everyone looking on. Your faith shines forth for all. Your glory is revealed even in faithful people. Thanks be to God. 
Amen.